In this video I'll be demonstrating a quick way to measure the calcium score from contrast and hound CT. This could be useful to get added prognostic information and eliminating the calcium score can substantially reduce the radiation dose associated with a combined calcium score or contrast CT protocol. It can be done in four simple steps. Firstly, find the calcium. Secondly, select the calcium with a plaque measurement tool. Thirdly, change the threshold for the detection of calcium to 320 Hounsfield units. And fourthly, apply a converting factor. To illustrate, in step one, find the calcium. Best thing to do is to reduce the window level and increase the window width a bit, increase the MIP, and carefully scroll through and, and look for calcium. In this case, we can clearly see some calcium in the proximal LAD and there's no calcium elsewhere. In step two, simply select the area of calcium with a plaque measurement tool and check that it's done so accurately. In step three, we simply go to the plaque tool settings and change the threshold for calcium to a higher threshold, ideally 320. By increasing the threshold, we see the volume of calcium measured drop substantially so that now 9.5 cubic millimeters of calcium has been measured. So in step four, we simply multiply that value of 9.5 by the converting factor of three to get a calcium estimated calcium score of 28.5, which closely matches the score of 29 measured on the formal calcium score. So again, simply look for the calcium, select the calcium with the plaque measurement tool, change the calcium threshold to 320 Hounsfield units, and multiply this volume by three, and you'll have a reasonable estimate of the calcium score. Now let's have a look at a more difficult example. Here again, we start off by looking for the calcium. Uh, we've increased the MIP and changed the window setting. We can see some calcium now coming up in the circumflex artery, but it's a little bit diffuse. And in the LAD, there's certainly some calcium in disease, but it's very irregular. And the uh, plaque measurement tool has some difficulty. As you can see, it clearly misses the calcium and includes the calcium within the vessel lumen. When you try to measure the calcium, it doesn't pick it up. It's even worse in the, the circumflex artery where the plaque measurement tool misses the calcium completely. And obviously any estimate based on this measurement will be incorrect. The problem seems to occur from the way the Vitreous software deals with differing contrast densities. And we can usually fix it by changing the default value to the density within the aorta minus 40. So here we measure 510 Hounsfield units in the ascending aorta. We'll then replace the default setting to 510 minus 40, which is 470 Hounsfield units. And most of the time, that'll improve the accuracy of the plaque measurement tool. Having a look at the effect in the circumflex, previously it didn't pick up the calcium. Once we change the setting, the contours are much more accurate. Again, we can scroll through to make sure that the boundaries are correct and that no contrast has been included within the measurement. Uh, looking at the volume of calcium, we see that it's 13.5 cubic millimeters. In the LAD, the black measurement tool has done a better job now, even though it's not perfect. The volume of calcium in those two areas is 17 cubic millimeters. Adding that to the circumflex, we get a total of 30.5 cubic millimeters. Simply multiply by th that by three, and we get an Agatson score of about 90. Uh, which compares reasonably well to the formal calcium score of 105. Now there are limitations to this approach. What I'm presenting here is just a very quick and dirty method of estimating the calcium score. The automated plaque tool doesn't always work and this conversion factor can definitely be contingent on the software that you use. Now for the most accurate measurements you should keep everything at the default setting and manually adjust the calcium detection contours. You can then use a conversion factor of 3.13. Using this method, you will get results close to the repeatability limits of calcium scoring itself. And here I demonstrate manually adjusting the contours with the Vitria software. For details on this more accurate method, you can see our publication in the Journal of Cardiovascular Computed Tomography.